This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. My name is Andrew Crane, and I'm here to present Sage 100 Training Tips and Tricks for Net at Work. Today, we're going to talk about and demonstrate how to copy historical journal entries as well as utilizing standard journal entries. So here we are logged into SAGE, and we have to make a journal entry. So one of the things that we can do when selecting a general journal entry and coming up with the source journal, we hit the pound sign to make a new entry. We have the ability to copy from. And we can copy from standard journal entries or journal history. At this point, let's look into historical journals and see if we can find one that we want to replicate and redo. So here's a list with the date of the various journal entries. So in this case, I'm going to select journal entry number 25 from April for 173,146.38. When I select it, it shows me exactly what the comments was. It takes today's date and it actually fills in all the various general ledger accounts and entries. At this point, if you wanted to make a change, we could come and make a change and make that, I'm just gonna make that 25 cents, so I'm gonna add a penny. At this point, you'll notice I'm out of balance. So let me just go back up and add a penny over here to put myself back in balance. So now that I'm in balance, I have taken an entry that I've done in the past of 49 lines and just in a matter of seconds was able to not only enter it, but replicate it. At this point, if I would like, I can also uh, post, but I'm gonna make another entry and show you another option that we have. And so here I'm gonna start with the source journal of JE, make another entry. Let me accept that one. And I'm gonna copy from a standard journal. Now I already have an existing standard journal created and saved. So now I'm gonna take that one but if you notice in this particular case, all the entries that I have are blank. So there's no debits, no credits. All I have is the journal, uh, general ledger codes. This gives me the opportunity to create these templates that if I want to, I can then fill in and put in the exact amount that I would like. So you have the ability to make it easier on yourself and just create your entries by copying something in, in a previous entry. Here, I'm gonna go look at the standard entry and we'll just do a preview to see what we've saved. So in this particular case, what you're seeing is we have a JE, which is the one that we saw, but there is also an MA journal that we didn't see. So when you decide in your general journal entries, if you select a specific source journal and then say you want to copy from a standard journal, now all we see are the MA. So you have the ability at that point to save these templates that you can use over and over again. In addition to that, uh, we do have the ability for setting up recurring, recurring journal entries. I'm going to look at some that I've done in the past, and here are some journal entries. Here is one that was done for depreciation. The cycle is set for 99, which we'll go over another time. And these are the debits and the credits to make up this existing journal entry. 
Uh, in addition to that, I've set up a blank one. And that if I wanted to now, I could change the amount and then create an entry from there. When you do a recurring journal entry, what the system's going to ask you for is, is there a source journal that you want to run? Is there a specific cycle that you want to run or a specific reference number? So you have the ability to set up these recurring templates and proceed from there. So that is the very simple way of how you can copy existing historical entries. You can make templates, save them as standards, replicate them, change the amounts to facilitate and make the general ledger data entry easier. Thank you for attending. Uh, this is Andrew Crane, and we were talking about how to create and uh, ease, make easier journal entries. If you have any questions, feel free to please reach out to your account managers or our consulting manager, Lisa Margolis, or myself, Andrew Crane. Again, thank you very much.